Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today we are going to make this lollipop animation inspired by a Cinema 4D tutorial. Uh, we are going to use geometry nodes and uh, as you see, there are some glitching results from this animation and we will discuss it further within the tutorial. So let's start. So here we are in Blender 3.6. The entire principle of this lollipop is pretty simple. Essentially, every time you find that kind of an organic geometry. You need to think about using volume or remesh. So where's my remesh? Yeah, something like that. But uh, we can create a kind of remesh voxel effect within geometry nodes, so we are going to do that the same. As always, I'm going to use the presets which you can download for free from the link in the description. So let's just start with a curved linear. You can start with any curved line. Uh, essentially, this curved linear is just the curved line node and uh, we resample it. So simple. It's really just that simple. Uh, but we are going to use the helical connection. I've discussed this node in the past, uh, which is essentially just a curve circle and the point instance, uh, the curve line onto that. Uh, that's also very simple. Okay. The usually when we use helical connection, we are trying to take a float range to make the helix. But that's not the function today. The reason I need that is actually only to control the radius of it. Okay, so we radius by one so that I can capture an attribute to capture the initial position. Uh, initial position, position. And I take a set position to mix the initial position with it. Right now, you only see the shrinks, but it's very boring. So we take a spline parameter. As you will see the effect, we take a float range, a float curve, actually. We take a float curve, and just my, by manipulating the curve, you can see how it goes. And then we can increase the amount of iterations, and we can decrease the amplitude a little bit. Here, maybe instead of manipulating the graph, I want to use a remap 0 to 1, which is essentially just a map range. Okay, it's because it's just a smaller and a tinier because I know the range is 0 to 1. Something like that. So once we have this kind of result, we can resample it. You can resample as much as you want, so you can use the length. Uh, here, let's preview that a little bit. So we take a curve points preview so that we can know how dense it is. Something like this, we can decrease it further. And then I'm going to take the points to volume. And then we take a volume to mesh. The radius is too large, so we can decrease it. We can decrease it using the parameter. Maybe the same, uh, we're doing the same using remap 0 to 1. And we plug that into the radius. Decrease the radius, maximum, decrease, something like that. Okay. And then we can increase the voxel amounts, 128 or 256. But the number does not really matter, you just give a number. Higher the better, but it also costs more in calculation. Current support of volume within geometry nodes is not advanced yet. Uh, they are launching a project to make SDF available, but uh, it's not available yet in 3.6, neither 4.0, I guess, maybe in the future. Okay, so once we've done this, it's not really organic, so we can take some, we can add some noise first. We take a noise 3D, we add the colors into the offset just a little bit, and I need to add a fourth. So that's the all this starting point do not move. And I can increase or decrease the amount of a frequency. You can also use a spline info node to add a spline index to the seed. So that 
every spline is having a different seed. You can also decrease the scale. Anyway, once you have done that, the magic, in addition to the volume, is actually to blur attribute. And we are going to blur the position. So since it's similar to the smooth modifier, where's my smooth? Uh, since it's similar to smooth modifier, you can just uh, increase in the iterations. 35. Then you get this kind of organic shapes. So the rest is just the playing around the parameters. For example, you can make this one goes to be a little bit closer. You get this kind of sticking volume, whatever stuff. You can also add displacement after. So we take a normal displacement, normal displacement. And we take a noise 3D using the factor and decrease the scale, increasing the frequency. Okay. It does not really matter what you do, but this is basically the concept. This is a procedural setup which means instead of using a curve line, you can just randomly draw any curve. So I can just draw a curve like this. And uh, I import this curve. And as a geometry, you get something like this. It looks kind of very weird. You can tweak more by yourself. But uh, this is the concept. Since we're doing a simple lollipop animation, so I only use a curve linear and I can delete this curve. Okay. And the next part is to add some other sticky part on two end of this curve. So we can use the same curve linear, but I only need two points. And then we point instance. I'm going to instance a UV sphere. And let's take a 32, 32. So it looks like this. I'm going to use a transform node to crush it. So it looks like this. And uh, we need to join them. So here, this is the part which is a very kind of tricky. Firstly, a uh, blender is not very advanced in volume processing. So here we cannot join at volume. So this is no. And we cannot join at the end because the blend attribute node can only work for connected mesh. So we cannot join it at the end, no. So we have to join that before we get a volume. But uh, yes, so here, if I use a point to volume, there is no volume inside these two parts, and it will be very weird. So we have to use the mesh to volume. To make the consistency, it will be better if we replace this part also as uh, mesh to volume. But we only have curves, so we need to give the thickness. So let's bevel curve. And here we use the radius to replace it. And you can see this is red line because we need to set the radius. So we set radius. And now we take the radius into one to recover it as much as possible. And then we join geometry and we replace this volume to mesh. So now it looks like this. Uh, we can decrease the, we can tweak all these kind of value parameters until you are satisfied with it. And we increase the voxel. 
256. Okay. Once we've done that, we need to realize the instance so that they can have everything mixed together. So we get this kind of structure, very organic, and this is it. Before I actually finish this animation, I want to discuss the glitching you've seen at the beginning of this entire setup. Because we are working with volume, volume is based on points, and the Blender support of volume is not advanced yet. So if you manipulating this value, you can actually see these kind of glitchings because every frame are independent to each other. So every smoothing result from these volumes and voxels are different. That's causing glitching. Unless we have more advanced uh, volume calculation, I don't think that it's possible to be solved. And of course, as we are moving the position, the normal displacement will also be different because the position attributes used inside is changing. So you, every frame you get a different noise. There are many downsides uh, to it, but the major issue actually is staying the this entire volume calculation. So how do we solve it? If you really want to animate it, one kind of easy method is just to transform it in this case. So you just shrink it and you expand it. This looks to be very dumb. And sometimes you can see the flaws because they're being crushed to be too narrow. You have all these kind of problems, but the people may not realize it. So it's kind of a cheating, but sometimes it works until we have more advanced results that can be created using volume. Uh, and the next we are just going to complete uh, this part of the tutorial to add the candy. Here, let's firstly create a candy mesh. I'm not going to do that procedurally because it's wasted too much time. So I'm just going to select these two edges and extrude along normal. Something like this. And I can import this sphere into the node tree so that I can hide this sphere forever for the rest of my life. So I have this candy mesh. In the original tutorial, in Cinema 4D, they are using a Voronoid fracture, which we also do not have in Blender. So we have to use a simpler method. Actually, I think this method is better, uh, which is mesh pooling. And I need to create a UV sphere for the cut. So maybe 32, 32. And I can take a normal displacement, normal displacement. And again, noise 3D. Put into the factor. We can increase the frequency so it becomes sharper. Or you can increase the amount of segment as well. Uh, but it's up to you. I'm going to increase the radius because it's finally creating a cut so it should cover the entire whole sphere. So I plug them into the mesh. And if I visualize that everything is being cut out, so I need to set a transform geometry and I can move it. You can see this cut. Now this cut is a little bit too jaggy and uh, it's a little bit like a punching a hole inside. So I can transform it to make a little bit flat. And then I move it. So I can increase the radius. Move it. Okay. So now it becomes a flat, but it's a cut. It's completely procedural, so you can tweak settings by your own. Next, I'm going to use this mesh as a cut. So let's start and we can visualize the other half of it. We can join these two parts together. Here you will see 
you may potentially see some flaws, um, but you may fix that. It's not a very obvious. Actually, surprisingly, now it looks completely fine unless you change the angles. Okay, and then next we are going to separate these two candies. Separation is pretty easy. Let's take a transform node and another transform node. So one is goes to negative range, the other is goes to the positive range. So I can make two combine XYZ and I take a negative. So it's creating negative value and a positive value at the same time. Uh, actually, uh, they should go opposite. Okay. So now this is how it works. Okay. Something like this. Currently, you see it's not really perfect. Uh, the cut, uh, the edge is not a very clean. So we can do some changes. We can add some transform geometry to increase the size a little bit. So it covers, uh, no, it's actually before to cover it a little bit. Okay. So now it should look fine. Yeah. It actually looks perfect. There are still some tiny errors, but I think it's tolerable, especially if you just look on one side. So now if you use the origin, yes, they are separated. So now we mix everything together. We take a join geometry. We take a set shade smooth. Uh, they looks kind of weird, but anyway. So, if you want to do a volume animation, notice the entire separation is determined by this curve linear. So you can play around with this curve linear to deal with the separation. Here I can take the factor into 0 0.5 so that you can synchronize this kind of two value together. So I have this candy and I separate them. But if you are worried about the glitch as we have this issue for the moment, you can also deal with the skill as I've discussed earlier instead. Okay. And this is basically the concept. I'm not going to talk about the material. I believe as an artist, you are better than me. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.